Buongiorno guys! Today in Rome is super cold even though the sky is super blue. Anyway, a few days ago one of you told me Federica, can you please show us the Basilica of St. John in Lateran? Because I heard that it's actually even more important than the Basilica of St. Peter. How could I say no to that? How? But what do we mean by saying that this is more important than St. Peter? Well, because this is the first church ever built in Rome. It's not St. Peter, it's St. John in Lateran. And also, this is where the chair of the Pope is. What is the chair of the Pope? We call it in Italian Cathedra, and it's in here. So basically, when a new Pope is elected, he officially becomes Pope only after he comes here and he sits on the Cathedra. That's the very moment when he is officially a Pope. Also, did you know that the residency of the Pope was originally here? Exactly, because the Pope didn't reside into the Vatican until the 1400s. It was originally here, then about a hundred years gap in France, and then in the Vatican. Now, mask on, let's go inside. While I go inside, I want to tell you that this square, huge square that is in front of the church, is usually used uh, for uh, like events. Especially on 1st of May, there usually is a massive concert that takes place here every year. Remember that usually when you go to these very important basilicas, uh, you have to go through security. I just went through security. You just go through a scanner and, and that's it. Uh, this happens also for St. Peter, St. Mary Major, you know, those important basilicas. To mention before we enter that this is of course not the original basilica built by Constantine in the 4th century, it was a, a remake. Anyway, the original basilica Constantino was more or less the same size, so it was already a massive basilica in the 4th century. And then of course there has been renovation through the century, so we will see medieval, baroque, and the facade is from the 1700s, so a mix of everything. Okay, so now we are entering this portico here. And if you look at this door, I told you we will find a little bit of everything, but how old do you think this door is? Well, this is from the first century. This door, in fact, was brought by Francesco Borromini that was working at the restoration in the 1600s directly from the ancient Curia of the Roman Forum, the Senate building of the ancient Roman Forum. So this is one of the most ancient doors of Rome, together with the Pantheon door, the original doors of ancient Rome. How amazing is this? And also, if you look over there, there is a statue of Constantine. And this was found in the thermal baths of Constantine on the Quirinal Hill. We haven't even entered yet and we're like, wow, already? <laughs> so now let's go inside. And look at this. This is the door from the other side. I mean, can you imagine how old is this? How old is this? It's incredible. First century. And then just right next to the door, you can already see the delicacy of the restoration of Borromini. Look at this. So elegant. How beautiful is this place? I told you there is a mixture of styles, of different styles. Um, you can tell by the floors, the cosmetic floors. And then we have these apps. The floors are from the restoration of Pope Martin V of the Colonna family. That's why we have a column, Colonna in Italian. It was his family emblem. Then we have this beautiful Ciborium, Ciborium from the Middle Ages. which covers the altar, this is the main altar, and over there, the apse. They're doing a mass right now, so 
so we cannot get closer but look at these mosaics that you see here all in golden everything is medieval and over there the cathedral the papal chair this, this is where when a new elected pope sits down and becomes officially a pope and look at the decorations here as well like every single centimeter of this surfaces are covered with something now look at this side look at the ceiling here in the central nave and then compare it to what you see here on the lateral naves these were the restorations of francesco borromini you can recognize his soft simple elegant style and he wanted to restore also the ceiling of the central nave because it really didn't match his style but so he asked the pope to change that ceiling as well but the pope said no either because he didn't want to spend any more money on the project or because he didn't want to change too much the previous version of the church there is so much to see inside this church but what i want to focus on now is one of the biggest things you see in the central nave when you enter which are these massive statues if you count them they are 12 it's 12 of them what does the number 12 recall to your mind the 12 apostles for example starting on this side we have this apostle with the keys in his hands who do you think he is that's of course son peter that was given the keys of the church by jesus then if we move on to the other side we have this other apostle with the sword in his hand that would be saint paul then here we have saint andrew why is this saint andrew because of his cross he was crucified but he was crucified with his cross in the shape of an x not like the cross where jesus was crucified here we have saint john saint john here is writing his gospel the gospel of saint john is looking up for inspiration and he's always represented by an eagle and then here we have Saint Bartholomew. Saint Bartholomew was martyrized in a very cruel way. His skin was taken off him with a knife, and this is his skin while he was still alive. And then we have Saint Matthew here. Here he is reading, uh, writing his gospel in his book, and he has uh, this uh, sachet of money uh, be uh, below his foot because he was a tax officer during ancient Rome. I don't know if you realize that the church is so huge that I'm here talking to you or making videos and the mass is taking place and no one can hear me the mass is taking place just behind the main altar how big is that? okay guys I'm right next to Constantine <laughs> so from me and Constantine today it's all from Rome and I hope you like this virtual tour of San Gianni Ladrant did you know all of those things? did you know this is the church where the Pope used to reside? So let me know everything in the comments. I'm really curious to know what you think right here in the box. And thanks for watching. Ciao.